This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 6th day of December in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. Again on Defense Force Bell helicopter that was transporting military personnel between Arau and Eterengbang in an area close to the border with Venezuela went missing today after all contact was lost with the crew. The GDF Bell 412 helicopter was being piloted by well-known military pilot Lieutenant Colonel Reserve Mike Charles and Lieutenant Andy Crawford. There were five other military personnel on board, including high-ranking senior officers, retired Brigadier Gary Beaton and Colonel Michael Shahoud, who was in command of the operation, along with Lieutenant Colonel Sean Welcome. The GDF team was on a mission to visit troops at the border location. Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defense Force Brigadier Omar Khan at the press conference this evening said the search efforts were suspended late this afternoon but will continue early tomorrow. It was explained that today's search efforts were hampered by the bad weather that was in the area. The Chief of Staff said he remains optimistic that the team is safe and will be found alive. The aircraft was en route to our borders. It landed at Olive Creek and refueled. Shortly after takeoff, we lost contact communication. An ELT signal, which is the emergency locator transmitter signal, was emitted and has transmitted through satellite communication and to the aviation authorities. News source understands that contact with the crew was last made at around 11.20 this morning when a signal was received from the helicopter's emergency locator transmitter. The GDF said the coordinates positioned the helicopter at approximately 30 miles east of Arau and Ghana's western borders. As repeated efforts to make contact with the crew failed and the emergency locator transmitter went dead, search and rescue teams were dispatched from GDF headquarters and other locations. We had deployed our sky van with a search and rescue team from our special forces and we also had the support of uh, Omni helicopters. Um, which also supported the search efforts today. I, I wish to say that those efforts in the area by the use of the two aircraft I mentioned did not yield uh, what we were hoping for uh, because of the bad weather condition. The Chief of Staff said he has been in contact with Ghana's military partners and tomorrow's search efforts will be supported by those military partners. The Chief of Staff noted that those on the aircraft are some of the best serving in the Ghana Defense Force. The officers on this aircraft are among our best. He said the search efforts will continue tomorrow and will be intensified with additional ground troops. Our efforts to search will commence, re recommence in the morning. We have troops on the ground and we will uh, recommence those search efforts in the morning. I'm confident that what we would have gained today um, of the terrain and other um, data, we will have um, a better day tomorrow. This evening, the Ghana Defense Force is hopeful that the aircraft and its crew and passengers will be found safe. More news coming up in a moment. It was the start of GTT Christmas and all through the land. Not a smartphone was silent, all buzzing in hand. The stockings were hung by the modem with care in hopes that GTT prizes would soon be here. They say top up a grand or activate a data plan and just find the letters to GTT Xmas in the land. Plus, pay your bills on time, don't be a Grinch, and you could be a winner of the GTT Mega Million. Oh my lord! 
I just love to shop in this store. My customers them gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. How so like them? Electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup! Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. your time to win big the massey store's christmas jackpot promotion is back and bigger than before spend five thousand dollars at any massey stores to be the lucky winner of a brand new mgzs and fantastic weekly store prizes from now until january 31st 2024 what are you waiting for head to your nearest massey stores to shop now see our facebook and instagram pages for more details massey stores our family serving your family. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Buster, bust the flavor, flavors. We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors. Bust the flavors that my crave for. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors. Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors. Yeah, thirst buster. Grab a buster. Bust the flavor, taste the savor. Buster, bust the flavor, flavors. Buster, bust the flavor, flavors. Well, hours after the Nicolas Maduro government announced its plans to move ahead with making Guyana's Essequibo region a Venezuelan state, President Irfan Ali rejected the position and the series of measures announced by Maduro seeking to enforce the outcome of his December 3rd referendum. In a late night address to the nation last evening, the president described the development as unsettling and announced that the United Nations Secretary General has been informed of the development and the matter is now expected to be placed before the UN Security Council. On Tuesday, the Venezuelan president announced the presentation of a new map incorporating Guyana's Essequibo region and plans to authorize oil exploration in the region in clear violation of the orders of the International Court of Justice. President Ali said the move is a direct threat to Guyana's territorial integrity, sovereignty and political independence and is in violation of fundamental principles of international law enshrined in the UN and OAS charters. The measures announced are in blatant disregard of the order given by the International Court of Justice on December 1st, 2023. Guyana views this as an imminent threat to its territorial integrity and will intensify precautionary measures to safeguard its territory. Ahead of the late night address to the nation, the president held talks with the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and other regional and international leaders on the disturbing and dangerous developments from Venezuela. I have tonight spoken to the Secretary General of the United Nations and several leaders alerting them of these dangerous developments and the desperate actions of President Maduro that fly in the face of international law and constitute a grave threat to international peace and security. Also, Guyana will tomorrow bring this matter to the United Nations Security Council for appropriate action to be taken by that body. President Ali said the country has already engaged the Caribbean community CARICOM, the Organization of American States, the Commonwealth, and other bilateral partners, including the US, Brazil, and the United Kingdom and France. The Ghana Defense Force is on full alert and has engaged its military counterparts including the U.S. Southern Command. On the 1st of December, the ICJ ordered Venezuela to refrain from taking any action which would modify the situation that currently prevails in the Essequibo region, for which Guyana has control over. The court also ordered both countries to refrain from any action which might aggravate or extend the dispute before the court. By defying the court, 
Venezuela has rejected international law, the rule of law generally, fundamental justice and morality, and the preservation of international peace and security. They have literally declared themselves an outlaw nation. In the eyes of President Ali, Maduro is testing the mettle of the world court and in doing so has taken the lonely road. He has taken a lonely and worrisome road of neglecting his responsibility as a member of the UN family. An adventurous and reckless path that can only bring instability to this region and can only create more uncertain circumstances for the Venezuelan people. The region, the president emphasized, must remain a zone of peace. President Ali made it clear that Guyana will continue to pursue its case before the International Court of Justice. Guyana has asked the International Court to uphold as valid and legally binding the arbitral award of 1899, which established the boundaries between the two countries and for which Venezuela is now seeking to nullify. We will not allow our territory to be violated, nor the development of our country to be stymied, by this desperate threat. The December 1 orders of the International Court are binding on both sides and violation of such orders could result in international sanctions. Guyana has officially expressed its objection and rejection of the latest move by the Venezuelan government at claiming Guyana's Essequibo region. During a telephone conversation between Guyana's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hugh Todd, and the Venezuelan Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ivan Gill, today, Minister Todd expressed concern over the recent actions emanating from Caracas over the last 24 hours, which were in direct violation of the order of the International Court of Justice, which was handed down on the 1st of December. The International Court ordered that Venezuela refrains from taking any action that would change what currently prevails in the Essequibo region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs said the Foreign Minister reiterated Guyana's commitment to the resolution of the controversy through the ongoing judicial process and encouraged Venezuela to participate in the case before the International Court. Minister Todd also reiterated Guyana's commitment to respect for international law and the need for the maintenance of peace and security in the region. He encouraged respect for Guyana's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The telephone conversation between the two foreign ministers was initiated by the Venezuelan ambassador to Guyana. Guyana has been informing the international community on the latest actions by Venezuela in claiming Guyana's territory. The government of Guyana has also approached the United Nations on the issue. Foreign diplomats serving in Guyana were called into the Ministry of Foreign Affairs this morning, where they were fully briefed on the latest acts of aggression from Venezuela and the country's most recent moves at claiming Guyana's Essequibo region. Among the ambassadors who met with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs team was recently appointed U.S. Ambassador to Guyana, Nico Therio. Speaking to news source, the U.S. Ambassador, while not wanting to discuss the matters raised in the meeting with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, said the U.S. government's reaction to Venezuela's latest moves is being discussed in Washington. Our reactions are being discussed back in Washington and uh, we will let you know. Thank you. British High Commissioner to Guyana, Jane Miller, said the update from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was very useful. And the Chinese ambassador to Guyana, Guo Haiyan, in comments a news source, said the Chinese government hopes that the controversy could be dealt with peacefully. The peace and development are very important for both countries, the region. Meanwhile, Trinidad and Tobago's High Commissioner to Guyana, Conrad Enel, said Trinidad and Tobago's position is the same as CARICOM. In a statement last week, the CARICOM Secretariat denounced the Venezuelan referendum, stating that a Venezuelan referendum has no validity, bearing or standing in international law and could undermine the peace of the region. The UN resident coordinator in Guyana, Yasmik Oruk, said the border controversy remains in the trusted hands of the International Court. The, the process is with the International Court of Justice. The Secretary General trusts the International Court of Justice. Thank you. Guyana's Foreign Secretary Robert Poisson told news source that the measures announced by Venezuela and the implications were among the issues discussed with the foreign diplomats. It was primarily to provide an update to the diplomatic corps um, on uh, the recent statements and the implications of recent statements made by President Maduro and to enlist 
their continued support, both bilaterally and multilaterally. And Ministry of Foreign Affairs Permanent Secretary Ambassador Elizabeth Harper told News Source that Guyana will continue to brief the diplomatic community on the matter. She said while it is an unsettling time, she believes that citizens should be resilient as the government continues with its work in the diplomatic process. On Tuesday night, the Venezuelan president announced the presentation of a new map incorporating Guyana's Essequibo region and plans to authorize oil exploration in the region in clear violation of the orders handed down by the International Court. Look at the breathtaking beauty of the Essequibo, from its pristine rivers to its abundant resources. It's a treasure that belongs to Guyana, and we ask Venezuela to respect the rule of international law. commitment to this land is not just about ownership. It's about preserving its beauty and resources for our people and future generations. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela was settled internationally as full, perfect and final in 1899. Essequibo belongs to Guyana. John Lewis Styles has opened a new department, now offering home goods. Here you can find quality sheets and towels, pillows, blankets and even bath mats and shower curtains. Organize your laundry with clothes baskets, fabric steamers, irons and ironing boards. For the kitchen we have small appliances, towels and mittens, pot sets and dinner sets too. Decorate the house with mirrors, picture frames, floating shelves and decorative pillows. All these and more on Waterloo Street. It's fashion for the home. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. Leader of the opposition, Aubrey Norton, today rejected the moves by Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro to create a Venezuelan state out of Guyana's Essequibo region, declaring that the neighboring country has no jurisdiction over the Essequibo. The leader of the opposition said the development is not only abhorrent, but has dangerous implications for the existing territorial controversy and represents a flouting of the recent decision of the International Court of Justice. It is also being viewed as a major threat to the peace and stability of the region. In an interview with News Source at his Congress Place office this afternoon, Mr. Norton said the 1899 arbitral award that outlined the boundary between Guyana and Venezuela still stands, and it is clear that Venezuela's actions are misplaced. He said Guyana will not allow the Nicolas Maduro administration to capitalize on the border controversy, which is before the International Court to score cheap political points. And as Maduro grapples, grapples with his internal problems, we will not allow him to utilize the situation in es with Essequibo to achieve his narrow political objectives. Norton, who spoke to President Irfan Ali on the matter this morning, said the government of Guyana should press countries across the world to reject Maduro's attempt to establish a new state that incorporates Guyana's Essequibo. It's a dangerous precedent. It violates international law, and therefore it should be dealt with instantaneously. Essequibo belongs to Guyana, and there is nothing, there's no concept like Guyana Essequibo as suggested by the Venezuelan government. And the opposition leader said while he stands united with the government and the people of Guyana on the issue, he believes that government's approach to addressing the national crisis is lacking. First, the government should have prepared a proper aid memoir in which it identify all the issues and have it circulated in all capitals in the world. It's easy to do it because all the countries are at the United Nations and at the United Nations you could have them circulated to all the countries. Norton said missions and special envoys should be dispatched across the world to ensure that Guyana's position is known globally. He also submitted that the issue should be dealt with as a nation and not single-handedly by the government. 
According to the opposition leader, key stakeholders, including the opposition, should be involved in every step of the way and aid in decision-making processes as information becomes available and is analyzed as a collective. Government should have already established a mechanism whereby the government, the opposition, and all key stakeholders were operating like a war room in which we are analyzing every issue in which we are having analyzed the issues, putting out the information, and giving leadership and guidance to the people of Guyana. We have to do everything to build confidence in the people of Guyana. Mr. Norton said foreign diplomats should be called in to offer support and build the capacity of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to address the controversy. Describing the issue as a national crisis, Norton said it is important to put the appropriate organization in place to manage the issue, emphasizing that it cannot be done by the government alone. President Irfan Ali has announced that the government of Guyana will be intensifying precautionary measures to safeguard the country against the increasing acts of aggression from neighboring Venezuela. In his late night address to the nation, the president rejected Venezuela's latest actions to announce plans to make Guyana's Essequibo region a new Venezuelan state. President Ali said the UN Security Council will be approached to address the issue. We've engaged CARICOM, the OAS, the Commonwealth, and many of our bilateral partners, including the United States of America, Brazil, the United Kingdom, and France. The Guyana Defense Force is on full alert and has engaged its military counterparts, including the U.S. Southern Command. By defying the court, Venezuela has rejected international law, the rule of law generally, fundamental justice and morality, and the preservation of international peace and security. They have literally declared themselves an outlaw nation. The president assured that nothing will stop Guyana from proceeding with the case at the international court or stop the court from ultimately issuing its final judgment on the merits of the case against Venezuela. We will not allow our territory to be violated, nor the development of our country to be stymied by this desperate threat. Venezuela has been trying to get Guyana to open dialogue on the border controversy, but Guyana maintains that time has passed and the matter will remain with the International Court of Justice. The government of Venezuela continues to face increasing pressure with countries in Latin America and the Caribbean calling on the South American nation not to infringe on Guyana's territorial integrity in keeping with the orders of the International Court of Justice. The Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, on Sunday said his position and that of his government is fully aligned with the position of CARICOM, that Ghana's sovereignty and territorial integrity must be respected by Venezuela. In a statement, Prime Minister Brown said Antigua and Barbuda is in full support of the process at the International Court and sees it as a legal and peaceful means of addressing the border controversy between Guyana and Venezuela. The Antiguan Prime Minister said his government rejects aggression of any kind and insists that the Caribbean region must remain a zone of peace in the interest of the well-being and prosperity of the region's people. Prime Minister Brown said that he spoke with the President of Brazil and also the President of Cuba, asking them to urge the Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to respect the decision of the International Court of Justice. Meanwhile, in Jamaica, the main opposition there, the People's National Party, urged Venezuela to abide by the ruling of the World Court. Ahead of Sunday's referendum, the ICJ ordered Venezuela to refrain from taking any action that could disrupt the status quo in the Essequibo region. The PNP said it stands in solidarity with Guyana and the position of CARICOM that reaffirms the prohibition on the international law against one state unilaterally seizing, annexing or incorporating the territory of another state. The PNP also said that CARICOM should intercede to ensure a formidable diplomatic solution that will result in a resolution in the best interest of all parties and the region.
Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Gaia Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Gaia's profit goes back to building schools, roads, another important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Gaia Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new bus, the soda water, zero calories, zero sugar, zero artificial flavors, 100% refreshing. Taste bus, the soda water today. Bus, the soda water, now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Svetlana Marshall in the region. A man was shot dead and his two children, ages 8 and 4, were injured during a gun attack at their home on Upper Oxford Street in Hannetown, Kingston on Wednesday morning. According to Jamaica Observer, the dead man has been identified as 55-year-old Mark McKenzie. The children, both students, have been admitted to hospital. Reports reaching Observer on Lying are that around 3 a.m., several men armed with guns entered the yard and went to the house of the now deceased, who was asleep in bed with the children. They reportedly then opened gunfire, hitting them. Mackenzie, the police said, received gunshot wounds to the face and chest, while the children were shot in their legs. All three were rushed to hospital, where the father was pronounced dead. The children were treated and then transported to another medical facility. The National Gas Company, NGC, of Trinidad and Tobago now has a 10% stake in a landmark agreement for a new commercial structure for Atlantic LNG, which was signed in London on Tuesday, according to Trinidad and Tobago Guardian. One year ago, the government inked new agreements with regard to restructuring Atlantic LNG with BPTT, Shell and NGC, which changed the commercial structure of TNT's liquefied natural gas entity, Atlantic LNG, for the first time in 27 years. The signing culminates five years of negotiations between the parties and opens the door for greater revenue to be derived by the state from the Atlantic LNG trains. For the government and country, it means an increase in potential revenue. TT's Energy Minister Stuart Young had said that government stands to benefit financially from the restructuring. For the NGC, who remits taxes and dividends to the state, it means a greater stake in LNG business. Quantifying the potential revenue, however, will depend on the global demand for LNG and TNT's ability to keep supplying the three trains with natural gas. Presently, the government is in negotiations with Venezuela to commercialize the dragon gas field, which would add longevity to the life of the trains and secure TNT's energy future. As it stands, TNT is the seventh largest global producer of LNG. 
And finally tonight, international news. Russian President Vladimir Putin is making a rare trip abroad to the United Arab Emirates, UAE, and is also scheduled to travel to Saudi Arabia, BBC said in a report. According to the BBC, Mr. Putin is expected to discuss the wars in Gaza and Ukraine, as well as oil production with the UAE president. The UAE is currently hosting the COP28 UN Climate Summit, but the Kremlin has not said whether Mr. Putin will attend. He has rarely left Russia since March when the International Criminal Court ICC issued him an arrest warrant. The ICC has accused him of illegally deporting Ukrainian children to Russia, a war crime, but neither the UAE nor Saudi Arabia recognize the court's jurisdiction. The Russian leader has snubbed other recent international summits, including BRICS in South Africa in August and the G20 summit in September in India. The trips come as Russia is keen to project influence and undermine the West's attempts to isolate it. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe. <laughs>